Ever go through that dry music phase where you feel like nothing is really hitting quite right? Maybe listening to that one song on repeat has kind of made it lose its sheen? Or maybe you feel like all of the music that's been coming out lately on the top charts all kind of sounds the same? And then, bam! Out of the inky abyss of Spotify rises your new favorite band and potential obsession. Obviously, that's happened to me. Lately, I've been really invested in the band Sleep Token. If you haven't heard of them before, they are like rock meets metal meets lo-fi almost. They're really, really hard to explain and because of their uniqueness, really cool. And each of their songs is so different from one minute marker to the next, it almost seems like you could be listening to different songs. And yet, each of their songs is extremely cohesive and they all feel like they belong in the album. It's really, really cool, and I've really enjoyed listening to their music. I'm just so inspired by the band. It's so cool to see a group of people creating art in the way that they want to create art, telling the story that they want to tell, and it just being about the art and the passion and the skill put into that. So, as someone whose main art form is knitting, that inspired me to make something based off of them. Also, welcome to the channel. I'm Rebecca Real, and I knit and do other fiber art stuff as well, and also get really invested into random topics, so let's do this. Hey guys, this is a note from Editing Rebecca. Uh, apologies for the next segment, for whatever reason, I just could not get the audio to sound right. I even re-shot it multiple times, but my first time ended up being the best take anyways. Don't worry, it's really short and you'll be back to decent audio pretty soon. Thank you! So, inspiration first struck me for the actual design of the sweater while I was at work. So I grabbed a little, like, notebook and I started doodling in it, different ideas that I had. Unfortunately, in that time, I have since lost the notebook, um, so if I ever find it, I will show you guys my initial sketches, but as of right now, it is in the abyss, and that's probably where it will stay. As for the actual, like, design, like, how do I want the sweater to look on the back and the front, I'm so torn right now because you kind of want to make it simple to make it easier to knit and more enjoyable to knit. But also, like, I designed this axe based on the one of the axes that they use in their imagery, and it's so cool, and I want it to work so bad, but I just can't make the design flow in a cohesive way, and so it's, like, really frustrating to me because Sleep Token themselves, all of the imagery that they pick is very strong. It's all about like deities and projecting strength, projecting power. All of the, the entities that they have imagery of all have like weapons. And there's clearly some like reference and like a nod to Nordic imagery and like Nordic weapons and symbols. Um, a lot of the fan base believes that their like main logo that they use is actually like Nordic symbols layered within each other, which is cool. That being said, I don't necessarily know if I can make this battle axe work because I was trying to make just the sleep token logo work on the sweater and it's been a battle. So for now, I'm, I think I'm just gonna leave both of these ideas pending and hopefully I'll decide by the time that I've like made my yarn choices. <laughs> The planning phase, when it comes to making a sweater, is all about asking and answering the right questions. And that involves how do we, like, how do we actually make the sweater? Am I going to do um, bottom up? Am I going to do top down? Am I going to knit it flat or in the round? And what about color work? Is it going to be intarsia or stranded knitting? So I always like to start with what seems the most obvious. In this situation, that would be color work, because even though I haven't decided completely on the design, I do know that the design is going to have a lot of quick changes between the two colors. There's going to be times where I knit two black stitches, for example, and then I want to knit a cream stitch, or vice versa. 
Whereas there are other times when you're working color work that you just knit a huge chunk of red and then you knit a huge chunk of black or whatever. You knit very big chunks of things and those lend themselves to different techniques. And knitting in this fashion allows you to essentially pull the yarn across the entire work as you're knitting it. So instead of knitting one big chunk of color and then another big chunk of color, we're gonna bring the yarn with us across the whole row. Now, on to the next question. Do we wanna do top-down knitting or bottom-up knitting? To decide this, we want to know first how do we want the sweater to look on us. Um, I designed some of the sweater's like actual imagery earlier. However, I never really talked about the shape of the sweater. Oversized, kind of a boxy fit, fluffy. I wish I could handle turtlenecks, but I cannot. It's just a sensory thing, I can't handle them. So I'm going to be doing a mock neck. Uh, so like a short mock neck that kind of is tight around the neck and then bigger sleeves that will balloon a little bit and then like taper off around the wrist. So for that boxy fit of the torso, what we're going to need is quite literally a rectangle so it would just look like this and then the top section would have a little semicircle taken out of it for where we would later cast on more stitches and knit our little mock neck but we'll worry about that the mock neck later but now we know that we want a boxy shape for our sweater and that kind of crosses out knitting top down the most popular way to knit from the top down is raglan increases which essentially creates a this <laughs> sort of shape, kind of like a house, the shape of a house, but with a semicircle at the top. So we're gonna go with bottom-up construction because of that. In the round or flat knitting. If you're not aware, in the round knitting is essentially knitting a tube. And since we're knitting from the bottom up, we would be starting with the ribbing of our sweater and then just working our way up in a tube until we reach the arms. I love knitting in the round. When I first discovered it, I was like, I'm never going back. It's so fast, especially if you're just knitting stockinette stitch all the way up, because you can just kind of go brain dead and knit and like not have to think about anything. And it's actually really, really good with stranded knitting, because then all of your strands are on the same side. You don't have to actually think about transferring uh, the stitches in your hand. Despite all that, though, I'm gonna have to go with uh, knitting flat because I've been having a lot of pain, specifically hand pain. It's actually really common for people who knit or crochet. There's a lot of repetitive movements associated with knitting and crocheting, and after a while your joints just kind of freak out. I have been trying to take a break, but um, I don't want to take a break. <laughs> And I want to learn a method that uh, will allow me to knit for the rest of my life. Like, I want to be that sick old lady who can knit a million miles per hour. And so I want to invest time into learning a method that preserves my hands and reduces strains on them as much as possible. So, I've heard that Irish cottage knitting is actually very good for that exact thing. So to do Irish cottage style knitting, you have to knit flat. So that is the main disadvantage I see of it. But the videos that I found online of old Irish grandmas knitting, honestly, their speed is immaculate. Like, like check that out, that's insane. That's so fast. Obviously, I'm not going to be that fast when I first start, but you know, give it time, maybe I'll get there, who knows. That being said, it's not just one yarn. I'm doing color work, so combining color work and a new knitting technique may prove to be disastrous. <laughs> I might have to start over um, and fail and then uh, do it all over again. But that is the interesting thing about knitting and especially when it comes to designing your own knit products, failure is a part of the recipe. 
And unless I wanted to do the same thing every time, that's the only real way that I could avoid failure is repeating my patterns over and over. And at some point, I'm sure I will repeat a couple of my patterns, but I don't find that much joy or enjoyment in that. I really like the challenge of creating something new, creating something that literally doesn't exist anywhere else. It's kind of fantastic. Okay, we're on our last step before we can actually start making our sweater, and that is getting supplies. So I'm trying to look for yarn that comes in either sizes three or four, and also comes in colors cream and black. And then we also need needles that fit that gauge and are long, slender needles. Uh, so the reason that I'm looking for three and four sized yarn is because the smaller the yarn, the better the detail you can put into your sweater, which is great. We love more detail especially in a pattern like this, but that also means the longer and the more tedious the project is. So I'm trying to find a happy medium and I feel like three and four kind of fits right in there. So I have made a list of a couple different uh, yarns we can look at. I don't want 100% acrylic because I, that will be too hot. And then I also don't want 100% cotton because cotton doesn't actually have any elasticity to it. So that makes knitting with it, especially knitting sweaters, very unforgiving. So I'm looking for more of a poly blend. So if we can find that, we're perfect. And you might be asking, Rebecca, why are you in your car? And also, Rebecca, why are you in your car with the AC off in 110 degree heat? And the answer to the second question is that I am crazy. <laughs> and I don't wanna ruin the audio quality. Uh, and the answer to the first question is that we are at the craft store. So I'm just gonna go in there and look for some yarns and I will show you guys what I get. Okay, so we've got our yarn. I was um, trying to find everything on my list, but I only found two of the four. So we ended up going with Wool Ease yarn. Um, it took me about an hour just walking around the store, partially because I got distracted. But something I forgot to get was knitting needles. So we'll just order those because that's fairly easy to just get off of online. And I can't go back into the store because I was very awkward with the cash cashier. Um. So yeah, now we are going to just go home, review everything, and I will see you guys soon. All right, so we have created a couple different design options for ourselves, decided how we're going to construct the sweater, and gotten most of our supplies. So that, I would say, is a pretty successful run. Um, I'm going to have the different design ideas up here. Please, if you guys have a preference or any ideas, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I had a really fun time filming it. It's certainly a new experience for me and I enjoyed it a lot. I think I learned a lot. Uh, so like and subscribe if you wanna see part two. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. Oh, and uh, yes, I, I did get a haircut. Thank you for noticing.